Live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering VMworld 2017. Brought to you by VMware and its ecosystem partners. Hi, I'm Stu Miniman here with my co-host Justin Warren. And we're at VMworld 2017. You're watching theCUBE. Uh, worldwide leader in tech coverage. Happy to welcome to the program a first time guest, Juan Gaviria, who's with ADP and he's the Senior Director of Technical Systems Engineering. Juan, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me, it's a pleasure to be here. Yeah, so VMworld, uh, it's my eighth year coming to the show. I've been part of the community for a long time, but one of the things that people love at this show, it's got about 20,000, maybe a little north of that, it's you know, peers talking to peers, you know, people that, you know, dig into the technology, you know, find out what works, how to do things better and everything. Uh, tell us a little bit about, you know, your role. I think most of us, you know, know ADP, we've either gotten, you know, checks with a logo on it or, uh, you know, uh, lots of various other services, but what's your role inside the org? Yeah, sure, so yeah. really quick about ADP, to your point, the, the logo is pretty well known. We, uh, we actually pay one in six people in the United States, so over wow. 25, a uh, million employees we pay. We, uh, we have over 650,000 clients. Wow. Uh, and our mobile app, which is really the way I would recommend that you look at your pay stubs, 401k, benefits, et cetera, has been downloaded uh, over 12 million times. So, uh, so the ADP brand is doing well, it's a healthy business. Uh, my role specifically is that I manage all computed ADP, so think about servers, server operating systems, and server virtualization, uh, that's my role. Yeah, uh, you brought up mobile, so you know maybe start there. Pat Kelsinger this morning was talking about kind of digital transformation. We look at financial services as how do you reach those users? You know, what does that kind of ripple through to all of the things that that, that you manage? You know, what, how long have you been there, and what what kind of changes have you been seeing? Uh, yeah. I've uh, I've been there 15 years, wow, okay. and I've seen I've seen a lot of changes. Yeah, 15 uh, years ago, they probably weren't even virtualized. So no, no. <laughs> in fact, I I remember rolling out ESX 2.x and using the good old MUI. So uh, uh, it was, uh, it, we've come a long way, and, and mobile, mobile has just been explosive. You know, from a product perspective, you know, the goal now, it's, it's mobile first, right? So even now, if you think about your, uh, your benefits, when you go enroll in your benefits every year, the goal is to make that experience translate to mobile, and that's, that's a little harder than, than it seems, but uh, that's the goal for ADP, it's everything mobile. Right. Yeah. Um, to bring us in, you know, what, what, what's kind of the scope of what you manage? Uh, you said ADP globally, you know, uh, what, what, you, what you handle, but you know, what, what's kind of, you know, the, the team size, you know, you know, how many devices or VMs or however you manage, yeah. uh, what, what are you listed in? Sure, yeah. so uh, my team is responsible for computers I mentioned, so think of everything from demand management through operations. Uh, we have uh, globally about uh, 50 associates that are responsible for that. Um, we have over 3,000 ESX I hosts deployed across seven global data centers with uh, well over 40,000 VMs. So it's a, it's a pretty good size infrastructure. Mm. Okay. Um, and bring us inside, you know, VMware, how long have you been using it? What, what pieces of uh, you know, VMware in the ecosystem or, you know, have you been using? Uh, we've been using VMware, again, since the early days of server virtualization. Uh, we're a VROPS customer. Uh, a VRA customer, in fact VRA, we're leveraging it for infrastructure as a service to our dev community. Uh, we have, for ADP, thousands and thousands of developers, so just the amount of churn in, uh, in our private cloud is, is tremendous. Uh, AirWatch, we're a big AirWatch customer as well. Yeah. yeah. Maybe, can you expand a little bit on the, on the developer piece? You know, what, what do they look for? How does that impact you know, what you're doing? Yeah, sure. I, I don't know what they're looking for because it's always changing, <laughs> <laughs> to be honest with you. Um, but we have somewhere around 6,000 developers and you know, they're obviously developing ADP's next generation product. So they're just looking for us to get out of their way. Right? They want VMs, they want them now. They want containers, they want them now. And every day I turn around, they want bigger VMs, bigger containers, and it's getting harder and harder. So through VRA, we provide those pools of capacity and then they're able to spin up, tear down, uh, rebuild VMs as needed. You know, on a monthly basis, what I see through VRA, just in the developer community lab, is about 3,000 or so actions a month. So it's, it's, pretty, it, it's pretty high, uh, high, high amount of change in that environment. Yeah, but based on what was announced in the keynote, particularly around the, the partnership with AWS, do you think that's going to resonate with, uh, with the, the developers? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, most of our, not most, but a fair amount of our next generation products are, you know, 
being developed on AWS, right? So everyone wants to be on AWS. Uh, in fact, we're bringing in a lot, of, uh, a lot of college hires, and as soon as they come in, they say, I want to work on AWS, right? So right. for us it resonates because what AP does, security is key, and we want to have a hybrid cloud. So we were actually part of the Lighthouse program, uh, so okay. we were early, early customer, got to see the logo during the keynote, which was nice. Uh, so okay. yeah, we plan on leveraging that relationship to help us, for example, burst in, in that dev, in that dev right. cloud. Yeah. One, yep. uh, unpack that for us. So, you know, one of the things uh, we, we look at, when I hear hybrid cloud, I need you to explain that because <laughs> every customer I talk to, it means different things to me, especially, you mentioned things like bursting, that little scary sometimes, so yeah. maybe explain you know, what that actually means in your environment. Yeah, so in, in the dev environment specifically, what it means is, as I mentioned, we get requests that come out of left field, right? Yeah. I need a 300 gig memory VM and 10 terabytes of of storage, and you're just like, Where? I don't have this, right? I don't have hundreds of those. So we can we can put that capacity out on AWS much faster, and as those projects materialize, we can then bring that back in. So that's what I mean by hybrid cloud. Okay. For us. Yeah, um, one, uh, so you're using the, the VMware on AWS, you, you've been testing that out, you, you yes. said. Um, my understanding is you're also using vSAN. Is that separate from, from that? Because vSAN's part of the, you know, uh, what's it, VMware Cloud or Cloud Foundation suite uh, piece of it. So uh, what's your interest been in, in vSAN and how does that fit into the entire picture? So it is different. Um, for us, the AWS relationship's going to be more of a managed service, obviously. Um, and we're, we're actually going to become a, a consumer Right, so we're going to feel like our own customers. Uh, to answer your question on vSAN, yeah, we, uh, we've made a, a huge investment in vSAN, so all of our VM storage, which again is you know, 40,000 VMs worth, which is you know, well over you know, four plus petabytes of storage, we're moving that all to vSAN. Wow, wow. Uh, what, what's happening in all those arrays? They're going to be gone. Yeah, <laughs> they're going to be gone. That, that's a really big move. Can you, you got to take us back, you know, how do you, is this a top down or you know, bottoms up, you know, what, what yeah, Walk what, us through some of that life cycle. What started that? Like yeah. how did you come to the even begin contemplating replacing all of your storage? Um, so it's been both, to answer your first question, yeah. both top down and bottom up. I mean, we've yeah. been looking at the technologies for a while, right, and just kind of keeping close to them. Uh, at this point, they're mature enough that we feel they can run you know, our business critical products. Mm. Um, and it's been, it's been a journey, right? For the last year, we've spent looking at you know, all the different market leading technologies and figuring out, you know, which ones make sense in an environment our size, you know, how do we operationalize this thing. Um, so it's, um, it's been a journey and, and this is the beginning for us, right? So we're actually, uh, mm. as I speak, we're starting to deploy our first vSAN clusters in production and, you know, we're deploying it in, in hundreds of servers at a time. So it's, uh, it's exciting and interesting times for, for the team and I. Yeah, uh, one, one of the interesting things is some people look at vSAN, they're like, oh, well, it's kind of small deployments, but uh, we had uh, some, some of the VMware people on earlier today, they're like, we're deploying internally, but it's lots of clusters, because if you tell me hundreds of servers, I'm like, well, that's not a single cluster, that's lots of clusters. How do you carve that up? How do you manage that? How do you roll that out? You know, what does that look like? Yeah, that's, yeah. Uh, that's the trickiest part, right? Okay. And uh, by the way, as we looked at different solutions, the cluster size uh, became one of the reasons why we chose vSAN. Okay. Uh, a lot of the other uh, solutions that are out there will limit you to about eight node clusters. Right. And to your point, we have thousands of hosts, that's hundreds of clusters, so yeah. uh, vSAN has the, gives us the ability to have uh, slightly larger clusters. Today we're going to look at about 16 node clusters to start, that seems to be where VMware is going as well, so okay. we'll follow their lead, we figure they know what they're doing, um, and we'll manage that using VROPS as well. Yeah, I was curious as to what was actually driving the, the change to vSAN, and what was it about vSAN that said, yes, this is great, this is the one that we're going to pick. Um, you, you've mentioned cluster size. Were there other things that, that made you sort of decide that it was clearly that, that vSAN was the right choice for you? Yeah, so to me, the, the way I look at vSAN from a vSphere perspective, it's that they've made storage a feature. You know, and right. our vSphere administrators, they know how to run vSphere, and now they just have another feature. Uh, so that was one of the main reasons, just the, the operational efficiencies from, from a team perspective. Uh, there are a lot of other reasons as well. Um, security, uh, some of the other competitors out there, for example, didn't have encryption when we were looking at it, which is yep. everything we do revolves around security, so uh, that was another key reason for vSAN for us. Okay. Um, and what drove us you know, at first was really, uh, with the traditional models, we found ourselves to not be very agile. You know, okay. Because our business is growing so fast, 
you know, yeah. we're building about six months of capacity at a time, and if you can think about the cost of that much capacity at a shot, it's millions of dollars, it's kind of sitting idle, right? So with, yeah. with HCI technologies and vSAN specifically, we think we're going to be much more modular in our approach and closer to just in time. So okay. we, we expect significant uh, capital uh, benefits from that. So, so if I hear you right, it's the uh, kind of the pooled nature of what you're doing and that the, the building blocks are small enough that you know, you're not getting to the, what people usually have is like, oh yeah, I've got all this capacity and I'm three years in and I'm still not using yeah. uh, a lot of what I run into, you know, I overbuy so much uh, because of that. Exactly, and and think about that first purchase. You know, you've got to sit with finance and say, hey, I've got to go buy, I've got to go buy an array and I've got to go buy a couple hundred servers. Now it's, I don't have to buy that much up front, so it's a huge benefit for us. Yeah, all right. And it sounds like it's going to be core deployments as well, because a lot of uh, like the HCI deployments traditionally have been for remote office things or just particular workloads like VDI will be one thing that it runs on. But it sounds like this is going to underpin pretty much everything that you do. Pretty much everything, yeah. yeah. In, in addition to VDI, we have a very large VDI deployment that supports all of our uh, all of our uh, customer support reps, uh, and it's going to underpin that. In addition to under underpinning all of the business products that, that you use to view your, your, your pay statement. All right, right. so, so one, you, you talked about the finance people. What about the storage people? I, mean, I have to imagine you had storage admins. Uh, you, know, you look at it and you say, okay, are they out of a job? Are they going to work on new challenges? Can, can you walk us through how you approach them, how they've looked at this whole migration, and yeah, wh what happens to them versus the VMware people? Yeah. The virtualization admins, I should say. It's, yeah. uh, it's, a, it's a funny question, right, because I've uh, become a little bit more popular now with yeah. the storage team. They've actually yeah. knocked on my door and said, hey, <laughs> anything we can help you with, right? Um, but no, it's a good partnership. My peer and I who run storage, we, we actually built a team together that, that's going to help us roll out vSAN, so we know that there are skills in the storage team that we can leverage, and, and our vision of it is that we no longer are going to have vSphere administrators or storage administrators, we're going to have you know, cloud engineers, and they have to know compute, network, storage, really, because we view the, the skills as, as converging as well, it's not just the, the software and the hardware. Right, okay. How about the management of that though? So are you going to just essentially be managing a team together rather than it being separate people managing different people? Correct, it's yeah. one team. One team. Yeah, one team. Mm. Um, yeah, th this really interesting one, uh, you know, I, I'm uh, just curious, in your kind of evaluation phase, um, what, what did you learn that kind of, if, if you had, if you had known it at the beginning, might have either accelerated or you know you might have positioned things a little bit differently. Um, now, now that you're ready to kind of this massive rollout, you know I think I would have had maybe stricter entrance criteria. Uh, if you think about a company our size and all the partners we have, uh, we looked at a lot of different solutions. We spent a lot of time in the lab. Uh, where in the end we knew that, for example, an eight-node cluster or not having encryption were showstoppers. Uh, but yet we spent the time in the lab to do that. So. So my recommendation or advice to my peers out there is, is come up with good criteria that you know you have, to, you have to have. And then from there, do the paper exercise and bring in the ones that you know will actually be able to get to production. What was that entire kind of evaluation phase? How long did that take? Uh, more than six months. Okay, yeah. and can I ask what underlying deployment you're going to use for vSAN? From a hardware perspective? Yeah. Sure, uh, HP servers, okay. uh, DL360s. Okay, and mm -hmm. what led you to choose that versus, you know, the, the, the Dell people aren't all lined up to say, you know, <laughs> come on, we own VMware, you know, you should do VxRails or? Yeah, <laughs> well, VxRail to me is a little bit different than, than just vSAN, uh, but yeah, absolutely, Dell was pretty interested in, in that business as well, and uh, the beauty of vSAN is it gives us the choice, right? Uh, we're, we've been a long time happy HP customer, so, uh, for this first phase, we'll, we'll continue to be with HP, and for, for some reason, if if something changes, we know with vSAN we have uh, that flexibility. Okay, mm. uh, you've been with, with VMware for quite a while. I'm sure you've been watching vSAN. Um, what what are you still asking them for? You know, kind of they've had a very aggressive roadmap. I think they've got you know most of the basic check blocks done. They've uh, heard a little bit about the roadmap, but what's on your to-do list for vSAN or any kind of the associated pieces? Okay. You mentioned VxRail as an yeah. example, and the automation that they've brought with Rail is, is significant, it's very valuable. Uh, I think they need to bring some of that same automation to, to vSAN standalone, so okay. you know, as I think about patching thousands of hosts with vSAN and the drivers and that entire matrix of things, they, they've got to help us there. Uh, I think they've got some work to do in terms of, uh, of improving uh, the performance management of that, because environments this size, 
uh, managing that manually is, is, is too much work. So I think we've got some work to do there, uh, but they've been a great partner, they've been listening to us, so I'm, I'm, I'm pretty happy yeah. about where, where they're headed. Earlier you mentioned deploying VMs in containers, is that like Docker, or what, 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 how do containers fit in? Yeah, so it, it, Docker has been uh, sort of a religious debate internally, to yeah. be honest. Uh, do you deploy it on bare metal? Do you deploy it on VMs? Uh, and I think right now we're, we're settled on deploying Docker on VMs, but very large VMs. You know, we're thinking 200 gigs, uh, and the goal will be, we're going to try to do that on vSAN. So uh, we're still in early, early development there, but that seems to be where, where we're finally landing on. All right. All right. Interesting, and I'm assuming that's Linux on top of the uh, yes. VMs to allow yep. that. Yes. All right, yeah. well, Juan Gaviria, really appreciate you sharing that. Really interesting uh, use case. I wish you best of luck thank on you. the rollout, and uh, thank you for being on theCUBE. Thank you, thanks for having me. All right, appreciate for it. Justin, uh, I'm Stu, and we'll be back with lots more coverage here from VMworld 2017. You're watching theCUBE.